Feature Friday. The freshest. <laughs> right, so the next one we got is Kule Desma. Okay. Right? And her song... Uh, the, oh no, and this is... It, this was... Yeah, the interesting part about this video is that it was recorded here in London at the Royal Albert Hall. In 1989. In 1989. Eighty nine. Nice. I don't know uh, for what or the, what the environment was, but yeah, it's it's right here. So let's have a look. Would you like me to say the name of the song? Oh uh, yes, of course. Actually, so, I think it's down here. Till I met you. Till I met you. That's Till I met you. Composed by Odette Quesada. Right. Yep. Go All on. right. I was trying to look for the name of it. It's, it's right here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I just had to scroll. Because it wasn't down. on the title. So go <laughs> let's have a look. Our next guest has been on the music scene since the late 70s and she's now firmly established as the Philippines. She's American. Number yeah, she is American. Ooh, oh, wow, she's there. number one wow. in the Philippines. Cool Ledesma. Cool Ledesma. Cool Ledesma. I was there not long ago. I mean, actually, too long ago. Two years ago. Oh, look at that. Does that look familiar to you? It's so 80s, isn't it? <laughs> I love it! This city has changed so much, dude. <laughs> Except for those boats, they're always the same. Yep. Except for that, that's always been there. <laughs> now Since it changes the beginning colors. Of time. <laughs> what a vibe! <laughs> I love London, bro. Welcome to London. Till I met you. I never dreamed, cause I always thought that dreaming was for so kids. Just a childish thing. Just a theatre. And I could swear love is just a game. <laughs> Upper echelon music, dude. It's like it's like having a five-star cuisine in front of you. Listen, now I understand. I now, now it's so clear. To me. <laughs> now it's so clear to me why the singers and artists of today from the Filipino industry are so rich in so many different qualities and the things that seem so. Uh, far-fetched for me are are so there for them because it's it, listen it, it's there they grew up listening to the songs they grew up singing these tracks they grew up emulating the sounds uh, replicating the, the modulations and 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 adhering to this these norms that are so astronomical right that, that to me now everything makes sense <laughs> it, it does it Wonderful, the, the the sweetness, the modulation, the breath control, the play itself of of performance, diction is so prevalent, and that's always a detail that's overlooked in singing in popular music. It's overlooked. It has always been overlooked, and is so tangible here. It's so present. I adore I was still, it. I would still would like would like to go further back though because. Yeah, there, there are there are some. Um, there's obviously a lot of theatrical influences all, all throughout the Philippines story. Well, you know? Especially when it comes to ballads and and, yeah. and singing. Yeah, and that still hasn't style. made sense to me. I don't know why that would be the case. Mm, I think you know? so. Yeah, obviously, I, I mean, the uh, the answer is theater is very big, or th uh, people like theater there. Mm. Fine, but that's not that. I don't. I don't find that's enough of an answer. I'd I'd like to go back in history and and. And understand. Well, I could argue that theatre has always been a part of a, 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 the British culture, especially in London. And yeah, London ballads from back then don't sound like that. Yeah, true. You know? 
I, we, I could argue, I, I could argue S- that. Spanish not... ballads are not very theatrical in itself. Actually. No, they're 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 romantic. They're very r- romanticized. But I suppose and they that... romanticize movement, so that could go through acting through song a bit. I, but of, that's of theater, course. though. No, that's but theater. yeah, yeah, it's, and I think that the theater quality comes with the that that diction edge. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It, the addiction and and there are, there are a lot of boleros like a, a classic ballads uh, in in South America and the, in the Hispanic music world where what makes things very uh, dramatic is the the use of diction. Yep. So I believe that the the theater edge that we're listening here comes because of the the prominent use of diction. Yeah. Why is that so prevalent? Still not a clue. Yes, yeah, but in English, right, as mm-hmm. well. It's like, what the fuck? Mm, yeah, yeah. Go I on. don't understand it. But it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> And people went home that day and they remembered that performance. Right. Gorgeous woman. Lighting and everything. Yeah, fantastic choice. That's more of like an American, Americanized sort of like take. Arrangement, arrangement, yeah, absolutely. It's very eighties to be fair. Yeah, this is so eighties. And America was the king of the eighties. You haven't been in there, have you? Not yeah, yet. I have, you have, yeah. It's a nice place. I mean, and, I don't know how much it cha- has changed since yeah, no, but the, eight, the 80s. The Royal Albert Hall is like iconic. Yeah. It's iconic. I've only ever been on it when there's tennis. So. Oh. I've been for a couple of plays in live music. Music, right. yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I would imagine it's a setup good. is different, right? When yeah, it changes depending on where you... Where so the same does, as the O2, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it a, adapts. Yeah, yeah. dude, I, I didn't know they played the NBA there. What the fuck? It's, it's adaptable. <laughs> what the hell? It's yeah. like, what? I mean, I can see it happening, right? But then it looks different. Yeah, yeah, it's like a completely different venue. And they're like, what? There was a concert there as well the other day? It's like, how did that happen? And I think yeah. now they're doing, like, works on it as well, so they're changing cool. it a bit. But that, but I think it's open again. I'm not too sure. That is fantastic. I mean, what a wonderful performance. What an incredibly melodic singer. So much presence and class, glamour. That's all I could explain that performance, right? It's so... Glamour. Yeah, it's so, uh, yeah, high-end. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. It's like you purchased your first... You what? Louis, purchased. Oh, purchased. Oh, yeah. right. Sorry. Purchase your first Louis Vuitton pair of shoes and they come in this luxury bag. I don't know how to say that brand correctly anymore. Right. So, it's like uh, buying your... Versace. Okay, shoes. good. Because I know how to say that one correctly. Versace. Or uh, Balen- <laughs> Balenciaga. Mm-hmm. Cool. I mean, what else can I say? Now, to close up, finish up that amazing podcast. We've got Noel Cabangon performing Kalungan live on Wish. Have Kalungan. Like I said, for all the other for, artists... I thought for a second the previous nah. performance was all in Tagalog and I understood all of it. And then I just remembered it was in English. <laughs> <laughs> Little brain fart moment there. Yeah. What brands can you name? Ah, yeah, I don't know. Can you name... Mochino? 
Mos- Moschino. Mos- are you sure? I, that's how I've always said it. Oh, But no. for all, listen, I've said brands Quoi wrong. Son. I've said brands wrong due to the. Qua, qua son. Okay, can we have a moment for? I think this... it's like that. Qua, like qua, qua son. <laughs> yeah, you I know that actually sounds proper. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, head bump. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be part of this clownery. <laughs> come on, come on, head, head bump. <laughs> 